this one little tweak in how you approach LinkedIn can give you results like this. I've worked one-on-one -on -one with hundreds of business owners and marketers, and this by far is the biggest game changer. Imagine you're at an in-person conference. You have a keynote speaker, breakout sessions, networking mixer, exhibit hall. We're going to apply the same business growth strategies you would use in each of these rooms at a conference to LinkedIn, because LinkedIn is that conference. Let me show you. The keynote speaker. Now they're typically some industry giant and the audience hangs on every word they say, and the audience is like, I am not worthy, oh holy conference speaker person. Yes, at a conference, it would be amazing to be that conference speaker and be worshiped. So who was the keynote speaker on LinkedIn? It's that industry giant who has tens of thousands of followers and they get hundreds of likes and comments on every single one of their posts, assuming they didn't buy their followers, likes or comments. Now, I am not saying that you need to be a keynote speaker or industry giant to grow your business on LinkedIn. And no, I am not talking about engaging with every single one of their posts in the hopes that you get on the radar and just maybe when they need your products or services, they think of you. Do not count on that. They have so many other followers to keep track of. Instead, let's quickly go back to the conference. Imagine it's right before the keynote begins and you're trying to figure out a place to sit. A smart strategy is to sit next to people you don't already know so you can grow your network. It can be uncomfortable, but the magic happens when you get out of your comfort zone. Believe me, I have to give myself a pep talk on this all the time. So likewise, on a LinkedIn post from an industry giant, pay attention to the other commenters. Look for people you don't already know. Look for people you would love to get to know. Comment back. Assuming they respond to your comment, and for me, it's about like 75 to 80% of the time, then reach out to connect. Like recently, John Asperian posted something about YouTube Shorts increasing from one minute to three minutes long. Then one commenter, Victoria Doxit, said, does this mean you have to twerk for longer? So I might have botched Victoria's accent, and I am sorry. But the point here is, it was literally the funniest thing I've read all day. I had to get to know this woman, so I commented back. It wasn't the strongest comment I've ever made, but we're connected now, and she's awesome. So my mission every day is to find at least one person I don't already know and start a conversation with them. If I can do more than one a day, I do, and I recommend the same for you. It's just a matter of how much time you have. Now we're gonna get to the next conference space in a second, and you're gonna love it, but first we must talk about your commenting strategy. What do you actually say in these comments? So here's what you don't say. A repeat of what's already been presented because that just adds noise. And certainly don't do a cheer like, great insight, Bob. Is it a nice gesture? Yes, but it's like cotton candy. Tastes great, but all fluff. Instead, here's what you do say. First, it could be a brand new insight that builds off of the post or off of someone's comment. Think of it as writing your own mini post. Now, I don't want you to go crazy with wordsmithing. Every, wordsmithing. <laughs> I wonder what wordsmithing would be. Maybe like when you miss a word. Anyway, don't go crazy with wordsmithing. Just say what's off the top of your head, like a conversation, but just make sure there's some meat to it. Or say something humorous. And no, it doesn't have to be about twerking. Okay, let's move on to the next conference area and you're gonna love it. It's more exciting than finding two front row tickets to a Taylor Swift concert. Or for me, it's more exciting because I'm not a Swifty. But seriously, you're gonna love it. The breakout sessions. Breakout sessions are even better than keynote speakers, and here's why. At a conference, breakout sessions are typically presented by people who aren't as well known, but they know their stuff. And it's so much easier for you to get to know a breakout session speaker than a keynote speaker. You can ask questions to the speaker during the breakouts Q&A. You can walk up to the presenter after the session and introduce yourself and shake your hand and spark something. And on LinkedIn, the breakout sessions are those people who might not have tens of thousands of followers, but they still post interesting stuff. When you comment directly on their post, they're more likely to comment back something meaningful so you can start a conversation. And of course, in these breakout sessions, I still strongly encourage you to sit next to people you don't already know. In other words, comment on other people's comments and meet people that way too. And if you happen to be the breakout presenter, please be sure to comment on other people's comments in a timely manner. Now we're gonna move from commenting to something else when we get to this next part of the conference. But first, let's talk briefly about how you show up at the conference. This is so important. Chances are when you go to a conference, you don't dress like a schlep. You dress halfway decently, right? I mean, your personal brand and your company brand are at stake. It's the same thing on LinkedIn. And because your personal brand is the ambassador to your company brand, your LinkedIn personal profile especially has to be dressed up. So you can be meeting and having conversations with all the right people on LinkedIn. But if your profile has missing sections or typos, or it's just flat out bland, it's like you're throwing all the opportunities out the window. Do I feel passionate about this? Yes, and you should too. 
one of the most important parts of your profile is your headline. And I have a whole video about the mistakes to avoid with your headline and how to write in a way that you can sweep people off their feet. And I'm going to include a link at the end of this video. And let's move on to the next conference area. And this area is going to get you rethinking things like the first time you saw the matrix and started to question reality, the networking mixer. This is where you start to have deeper conversations and really get to know people. So what's the networking mix on LinkedIn and how do we use it? It's the DMs. And if you're scared of DMing people, I get it. I am an introvert and DMing to me always feels like a bold move. But here's the deal. LinkedIn DMs get a bad rap because of all the LinkedIn losers out there who are trying to spam you. But there is another way to DM and it's more laid back, it's refreshing, but it's still purposeful. DM like this and you'll be a LinkedIn legend. So here's what you do, you LinkedIn legend you. First, gather a bunch of online articles or other resources that the people you wanna DM might enjoy. At least five things. And please don't make them resources that are really just sales pitches to get people to buy stuff. This should be pure heartfelt education for your audience. It can even be from third party sources that don't compete with you. Obviously the sources will get the credit and that's fine. Next, keep an eye on any industry events, even if they're from third parties that again, the people you wanna DM might enjoy. Also, turn on the notification spell on the profiles of the people you wanna DM, at least for those who post. Finally, every month or so, DM these people about one of the three things above. So share a helpful resource, tell them about an event, or add some extra thoughts about one of their posts. Now, if you're doing this last one, of course, most of the time when they post, you're gonna comment directly on the post, not in a DM but on occasion, DM them instead so you can have more of a one-to-one -one conversation. If after some time you find this person is receptive to what you're sharing and you're earning trust, then see if you can move it to a Zoom one-on-one -on -one so you can get to know each other even better and see how you might be able to help each other. You just have to be super patient before you get to that point because you have to earn it. Just remember that you're DMing humans, not robots. So you can't expect to lead everyone down the same exact path and have exactly the same messaging in the same exact time frame. Humans are messy. So here's some tough love. You have to throw away that easy button system because there is none and just have human conversation. That's what you do in person. So do it on LinkedIn too. Trust your human gut with how things are going. You can do this. Okay, let's move on to the next conference space. And this space might surprise you. Like when you found out that baby Yoda wasn't Yoda. The exhibit hall, AKA trade show. This is where you collect enough pens to single-handedly keep the ink industry alive. So what if you have your own booth at a trade show? Besides giving away lots of pens, you will have some conversations with some people. Well, at least with the people who aren't walking quickly past your booth and trying to not maintain eye contact with you because they don't wanna be lured into a sales conversation. The problem is the exhibit hall is more of a sales environment. And you even look more salesy with your stack of business cards and your logo polo. It creates a wall. The exhibit hall on LinkedIn is the company page. Sure, it's fine to have a company page and if you want to spend an hour optimizing it, go for it. I have a whole video to show you how to do that. But remember, it's nearly impossible for people to fall in love with the company page, but it is quite possible for people to fall in love with you. So if you haven't already, shift your focus to your profile. That's where your strategy needs to be. And speaking of your profile, one of the most important parts is your headline. And if you get it wrong, you can miss out on some huge opportunities. And I want you to have lots of opportunities. So check out this video in the top right corner because I'm gonna show you what to avoid in your headline and how to fix it. Thank you so much and see you in the next video.